and had been practicing sustainable design since about the mid-90s um, when I attended a great conference. I do both residential and hospitality and also commercial lead projects. And I'm Suzanne First, and I'm a past president of the ASID, American Society of Interior Designers. And I have been doing design for about 28 years and sort of worked my way into the green world uh, through jobs I've been doing and learning about it as I work. And, uh, and uh, I'm from New York and I live in California. And I thought that, um, you know, everyone, you know, different stages of whether they're building from the ground up or maybe you've got a home that you're renovating or maybe a home that you're happy with but you just want to make it a little bit more sustainable and eco-friendly. So I thought between the two of you guys, you could kind of address the different intensity levels of how you can green your home. So I thought we'd start with Annette. Okay, great. Oh, oh, we can stop. We can start with Suzanne. All right, we'll start with Susan. <laughs> it's better to start with mine because it's the simpler way of learning how to do green design. <laughs> So, it's They're not in the order I intended because um, maybe I can skip around so that we can get to the things. Well, let me start with that. Um, first of all, the simplest things we should know about green design in your home to make it more eco-friendly and also healthier for you to live in is by doing simple things like using green cleaning products. Our grandmothers used to use vinegar and, uh, and baking soda to clean. Oh, but we're on, actually, I'm sorry, we're on the light bulbs. The light bulbs, well, um, Fluorescent light bulbs and LED light bulbs are very low in energy and they're also cost efficient. And uh, they will save you a lot in your, in your electrical bills. But we are gonna, I'm sure you know that in building and every other way, we're all having by law to cut down on electrical. So a good way to start is compact, compact fluorescent bulbs and they come in a variety of colors and intensity and shape. And if you want to go online to the Environmental Defense Fund, which is edf.org, you can look it up and they have a guideline of the different types of bulbs available and how to use them. And I think that will be very helpful to you. Water conservation is very simple. It's all about how you use your water. Uh, when you shower, it uses less water than taking a bath. And if you do what they were talking about when we had water conservation years ago, you know, about conserving how much water you use, you can turn your water off while you're soaping up, while you're brushing your teeth, while you're washing dinner uh, dishes, and then turn it back on again to rinse. And uh, of course, uh, low flow uh, faucets and shower heads and water regulation in the toilets are all ways to help water conservation. And a very big one that a lot of people don't think about is that you should have a timer on your sprinkler systems outdoors uh, set for five minutes per zone area. And you should use it in the morning or late at night when it doesn't get absorbed into the air through heat. Energy Star appliances. They're very uh, efficient in saving on electricity and uh, will give you long-term electrical savings. And they're also good products. Insulation. Uh, believe it or not, your windows uh, allow a lot of heat and energy loss. And uh, it also allows too much heat to come in when it's hot and then your air conditioning has to go on. If you use double glass e-pane windows uh, that have an e-coating that uh, keep the heat out, that will help you a lot. And it's also very important to caulk around the windows uh, so that they're airtight. So that's another good way of protecting uh, your electrical bills and the energy. Also, Regular insulations now being used in the walls are very different 
we thank God gotten away from uh, fiberglass, which is so dangerous, and we're using things like recycled shredded denim, sheep's wool, and there's a new product out now. There's three new products, Aerogel, Afrogel, and Calwall, which are incredibly strong, super porous silicon foam. And it keeps the air really tight, you know, keeps you insulated. So those are things good to know if you're planning on any remodeling. And actually, I have a question. Is there such a thing, you know, does that really require tearing out the walls? Is there anything that you can do that's really an easy way without tearing your house apart to, to up the insulation in the walls? Well, they have spray-in foams. Uh, I don't know how they're ecologically rated, but there are ways of doing it through spray-in foams. But there are um, products that are cellulose-based that are also spray-in foams that are very easily uh, adaptable to existing homes so that you don't have to tear into the walls. Recycling, that's one of the easiest and quickest way to save. Uh, you can um, take newspapers and cans to recycling centers if they're not too far from you. You can obviously know to separate your trash, everyone is doing that now. But you can reuse a lot of things like glass bottles and jars uh, to store things in. There, uh, and uh, you will find that they're also very convenient to have. You know, you have sometimes you have some valuable things you want to keep safe and not and not worry about them getting wet, and you can have a covered jar and they're nice and airtight. And I was getting into the uh, cleansers, the cleaners. Most of the cleaners out today are very toxic, and they smell clean and fresh, but they're really not good for your health. So if you go back to the basics of vinegar, baking soda borax, and uh, some other choices that are now mainstream in all of the markets, like um, seventh generation, Planet, BioClean, eCover, they're all good cleansers. And believe it or not, if you want things to be really antibacterial, if you just use some hydrogen peroxide to wipe down surfaces, that gets rid of a lot of bacteria. Well, I touched on uh, the windows and doors uh, to have the double E gap glass. And with doors, uh, the best doors, if you're going to be replacing exterior doors, are insulated steel entry doors. But if you have a good solid wood door, the only thing you have to make sure of is that it's well caulked and weather stripped because it's all about insulation and preventing drafts from coming in and out and energy from escaping. All right, wood alternatives for flooring. If you want to do a little bit of redesign in your home and you don't know which way to go, um, if you want to use an FSC certified wood, which is Forest Sustainable Council, stewardess, Ford Stewardship Council. Uh, those are woods that are grown and engineered uh, and are replaceable and are good woods to use. There are also things you can use like linoleum, bamboo, recycled content tile, non-VOC carpet, cork, and now eucalyptus is out there. So there's a lot of uh, finishes you can use that are very good and environmental.